Ephesians in chapter 4, and we'll read again verses 1 through 3 just to kind of get our minds into the setting here and what's being spoken to the Ephesian church and it's being spoken and taught on in the last several weeks. He said in verse 1, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation or the calling wherewith you are called. With all lowliness, humility, meekness, as we've seen, gentle spirit, with long-suffering, bear long with one another, bear long in this life, forbearing one another in love, <laughs> putting up with one another in love, in agape. That's the only way I can put up with you. That's the only way you can put up with me is by agape, you see. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That is our verse today. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The term unity here in our text is unanimity. Unanimity. And it comes from, its parent word is a word that means one. One. Endeavoring to keep the one. Of the spirit. In the bond of peace. As we consider its meaning, and the meaning of one, it is not so much a reference to the doctrinal soundness. However, that's important. We know it's important. We know that it's important that we all, as the body of Christ, believe the same thing. And practice the same thing. But this word is not so much in reference to doctrinal soundness, although, however, that has to come into play, but it goes much deeper than that. It's not so much a reference to the fundamentals of, of church government, and there again, that's important. What we all believe about the fundamentals of church government are, are important. Are, they're important. Why? Because the Lord said, let everything be done decently in order. They're to be done in accordance with the Word of God, as we see in the Word of God. And there's to be an order in the fashion thereof. However, that's not what it is entirely referencing. But both of these are important, doctrine and church government. Or we want from time to time preach on. All our preaching is doctrinal. <laughs> But 
it is, has more reference to the fact that it is a spiritual union. It is an union between God and his people. Between Christ and his members. His body. Just as this is one body. Brother Mike Rossbrook is one body. Grace Baptist Church is the body of Christ. It is one body. Many different members having different gifts. to use and to serve in that body. It is, it has to do with be relationships between each member and with every other member of the church, of the body of Christ. Our relationship, my relationship with you, your relationship with me, our relationship one with another affects the oneness of this body. We love it when we have a business meeting and, and, and we, we can go out of bed. We're, we're in unity. We have great unity here. Amen. And Grace Baptist Church does. Amen. But let's not take it for granted. Amen. Satan would desire to tear that apart at any moment. And what we said concerning doctrinal is important. What we said concerning government is important. But you know of the church splits that I have been uh, not involved in but know of and, and have heard of and affiliated with over the years, do you know that I can't think of any of them It was over doctrine or over church government. What was it over, you say? Relationships one with another. This person got upset with this person and these people congregated to this person to their side and these people congregated with that person to their side and first thing you know it, such and such a church has split. The bond of the union that we're talking about is love. Amen. Which we dealt with last week. Forbearing one another in love and agape. It has to be there. Last week we said capital L, capital O, capital V, capital E. Or if you prefer agape to get the, the divine love side of it, Capital A, capital G, capital A, capital P, capital E. And each one of us, if we're born again, has 
have agape. And that agape is not just toward God. <laughs> yes, it's manifest toward God, but as we saw last week, it's manifested one to another. It's what enables us as brothers and sisters in Christ to put up with one another. Now, he goes on from that saying, endeavoring. What does that word mean to you? Endeavoring. Does it mean making a half-hearted attempt at keeping the oneness? Well, I tried, but she. I tried, but he. Is that what it's talking about? Well, you see, to really get the thrust of that word, we have to de delve into the Greek. And it means to make haste to exert one's self. Ah. So I'm to be quick and exert myself to be in unity with you. To be in oneness with you. And you are to be quick to exert yourself to stay in oneness with me. With the whole body of Christ. These things have not been new to our study in the book of Ephesians, has it? I mean, Paul seems to be really exerting the bodies of Christ to unity. We see it a prevailing thought in the book of 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. We see it a prevailing thought here in the book of Ephesians to the oneness of the body. Just to give us an idea of the word of God, two or three passages of scripture for us to take a look here at. Turn with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians. Book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 17. But we brethren being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart though, <laughs> endeavored, was quick to exert himself, the more abundantly in other words, not just quick to exert himself, but even more abundantly was quick to exert himself. Well, why? To see your face with great desire. In other words, because of the great desire that he had to be with him again and to see him face to face again, he was quick to exert himself to labor even more abundantly to make it happen. He had a desire to see him, didn't he? How strong was that desire? Well, he put forth a lot of effort and the sooner the better to be able to go see him. Turn with me to 2 Timothy. And this is a curious passage of scripture 
And you might say, when I reveal it to you, you might say, well, I'm kind of curious as to why they translated it in the English that way. Well, it was in keeping with the thought of the context in the verse there. But, and I think I may have pointed this out a couple messages ago, but 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 Study to, oh, hold, hold, right, stop right there. That's our Greek word. That's our Greek word translated in Ephesians 4 and verse 3, endeavoring. Translated in 1 Thessalonians 2, 17, endeavored. <laughs> Study. Be quick to exert yourself. To what? Approved unto God. <laughs> A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of God. Every child of God, and ministers especially, but every child of God ought to be quick to exert themselves to be a, a, a workman approved unto God. What and how, how is that manifest? By rightly dividing, by, and that phrase just simply means cutting it straight. In other words, being true to the Word of God. Not giving to, to the right or to the left. Being true to the meaning of the Word of God. And that takes quick effort, exertion on our part. It takes labor. <laughs> I don't know how many folks think study is easy. It's not easy. It's worrisome to the flesh. The flesh must rather be doing something else. The flesh is not interested in the Word of God. Much less is it interested, could it care less whether you cut it straight or not. Oh, just get up there and say something. You see, I have to answer, you have to answer to God. And we have to answer to God what we tell people about the Word of God. It's serious business. So, Paul is admonishing Timothy and admonishing all ministers and, and all of us to be quick to exert yourselves in the Word of God that you might be true to the Word of God and thus proving yourself unto God. A workman that does not need to be ashamed. Boy, I didn't realize that was so important. <laughs> yeah, it's of great importance. Chapter 4. Same book, verse 9. And we have a different English translation here. But, same Greek word. And, somewhere in the English, this word means same, same thing. We can all see from faithful study, we can see well how study would mean to be quick to exert ourselves in the Word, whatever we're studying. But he said, verse 9, he said, do thy diligence. <laughs> There's the Greek word, diligence. Ah, well, that, we understand that a little better in English, don't we, than just endeavoring. I mean, 
to our English today, diligence would speak a little more effort on our part than just endeavoring. You see, but it is the same Greek word means make haste to exert yourself. So Paul said, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. He desired that they would, would make haste and exert themselves to the point of it happening to come to me. Listen. Paul is telling us through of course the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's only using Paul as his spokesman, penman. He's telling us in chapter 4 and verse 3 that we should be eager and exert ourselves to keep the unity. Each member of Grace Baptist Church should be eager and should put forth earnest effort in keeping the unity. We have some more scriptures. What's wrong? Not necessarily talking about unity. They are talking about our spiritual man, which our spiritual man has direct reference on our unity. He said, keep the unity of the Spirit. Now, remember whether that's in my notes or not. If it's not, I, I, I intend to it. And if it is, we'll get to it, but I'm going to say it now, too. But... The Spirit only leads in unity. Yes. And it leads in that, what we're saying, the meaning of, of unity is, one. It leads in that which is, in unity, is one with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, as they are one. He doesn't, he doesn't lead me one way and lead you another way. He leads us in that oneness. If you think one thing and I think another, oneness is wrong and it might be both of us wrong. We might both be in the flesh on the situation. But I can guarantee you one thing. There's only one that would be in the Spirit. Two opposing views. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 4. And, and again, these passages deal with the Greek word that we're dealing with. Hebrews chapter 4 and... Verse 11. And these verses, as I said, tend more towards the spiritual side of things. He said, Let us labor. There's the word. When we understand labor, you now some of us may not be so quick to put forth that exertion, to put forth that labor. But here we're told to let us labor. Let us be quick to exert ourselves. Therefore to enter into that rest. He's speaking about being at rest with God our Father. Let us, let, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. He's talking about disobedience or unbelief. Uh, unbelief is, is di uh, disobedience is unbelief. We didn't 
trust God. We didn't believe God. We were disobedient. Example. And I believe earlier in the fourth chapter or third chapter one, he gave the example of, of Aaron and, and Moses. Would everybody here agree that Aaron and Moses were saved men? They were God's servants. They were God's servants to lead Israel out of Egypt. They were God's servants in, in the wilderness. But they disobeyed God. And if you turn back to the Old Testament where they disobeyed God, God charged them with unbelief. In that instance where they disobeyed Him. And because of, of that disobedience, because of that unbelief, they weren't allowed to go into the promised land. So he's talking about us as believers and the times that we are disobedient is we're exercising unbelief. And when we exercise that unbelief, when we exercise that disobedience, we're not at rest with God. It breaks fellowship. Well, we can we can think about examples in our life when when we knew we were in disobedience and we we weren't in a good standing. We weren't in a restful state. I think back in, in my years spent in, in rebellion against God. I, I wasn't at peace. I wasn't in rest. I had, yeah, I had peace with God, but I wasn't at peace with God then. I was walking in disobedience and rebellion. And, and as I think back on it, it seemed like a long period of time. He let me go, and as I think back on it, it was a long period of time. He let me go. But there came an end when he said, you've gone far enough. Now it's time to get the whip out. Or it's time to rebuke you. And you can probably think of similar instances in your own life. When you were in disobedience, you were not at rest. And so he says, let us labor, let us make haste, let us be quick to exert ourselves to be in that restful state. And you can't be there through unbelief. Disobedience. You can only be there as you're obedient to God and to His commands. So therefore, every one of us ought to put forth that quick, earnest effort to always be in fellowship with God. In the book of 2 Peter, 2 Peter in chapter 1, and I had only wrote down one verse, but uh, I really need to read more than one verse because we need to go up to verse 5 of Second Peter chapter 1 in verse 5. And he said in the preceding verses and that we're children of God and grace is applied to us and grace be multiplied to us and so forth. But in verse 5 he says, And besides this, giving all diligence, there's, there's our word again, Amen. add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. <laughs> you see, we can have charity more or less. Some of us have less rather than more. For if these things be in you and abound, 
They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. He sees he's still talking to save people. And the, the child of God that is not adding to his faith and is not adding to that, all, the, all those things that he says ought to be added, that he's not given diligence to add to his faith. <laughs> he says he's just blind and, and really can't see afar off. In other words, in other places he put it, you like milk-fed Christians. You see, we all know a baby can't see very far, can they? They can only experience the here and now. And then as grow older and grow into adulthood and to maturity, they're able to see more clearly. They're able to see better. Well, the same thing with the child of God. You see, as we, as we grow, as we add, as these things are being added to our faith, we grow. Look what he says in verse 10. Wherefore, because of all these things, wherefore the rather brethren give diligence. Be quick to exert yourself to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. He's not talking about being quick to exert yourself to be saved. He's talking about giving proof that you are saved, giving proof that you are a child of God. And how do you do that? Through quickness and exertion, adding to your faith, and all those things that were mentioned there. Well, it's a lot of those things mentioned there go to our oneness as the body of Christ. Wow. Something, huh? Chapter 3, same book. And verse 14, after saying that we know that these heavens and earth are going to be dissolved. They're going to be purged with fire. They're going to pass away. And all things are going to be new. Speaking of the day of the Lord coming. Before that he said he's long suffering. That day hasn't come yet because of his long suffering. And who is he long suffering to? Long suffering to usward. Who's the usward? The elect. <laughs> Not willing that any should perish. And so then in verse 14 he says, Wherefore, because you, you know these things, because you know the day of the Lord is coming and the heavens and the earth are going to be dissolved. They're going to pass away. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Listen, we're to be quick to exert ourselves that we be found without spot and blemish and at peace with him. Listen, do you want that day to come when you're walking in disobedience to God? I don't. I don't. But every time I sin, it's a great possibility he could come back then in my disobedience and in my sin. Would I not hang my head in shame at his coming then? Oh, his coming would be grand and glorious, wouldn't it? But oh, not to have been found in peace at that moment. Wow. Sobering thought, is it not? That gives us maybe a little better idea of the uh, and understanding of what Paul's telling us in 
the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3 we ought to be quick and, and put forth an earnest effort labor to keep the unity unity of the spirit it is the responsibility of every member of the local church of, of, of the Ephesian church he says of Grace Baptist Church to be eager to maintain to keep to guard the unity of the spirit a couple passages of scripture in closing on this thought now, not that we'll be done with endeavor but turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians. The book of 1 Corinthians in chapter 12. Oh, you knew I was going there, didn't you? Just the thread and just the way it's working, the oneness of the body of Christ. And look with me here at, well, I want verse 27, but I want to read a couple other verses. He said in verse 25, he said, that there should be no schism in the body, no division. When you and I aren't getting along, or you aren't getting along with me or holding something against me that I may know nothing about there's a schism, there's a division or I'm upset with you about something, maybe, maybe you know it, maybe you don't know anything about it there's a schism in the body, there's a division in the body yet there should be no schism in the body but that the members should have the same care one for another I ought to have the same care, yea, even a higher care for you than I do for myself. And you for me, and you one another. What one of us don't do our best to take care of ourselves? Well, some of us, <laughs> the example I was going to use, some of us, when, when we're affected, well, we seek help for it. Some of us just kind of want to go off and suffer quietly and <laughs> in peace. But when it comes right down to it, we want it to go away. We want it to be taken care of want it over with. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Do we? <laughs> I think Grace Baptist Church does. That's the grace of God upon us. Pray it continues. Pray that none of us, pray that I don't, pray that you don't, None of us let Satan get in there and, and destroy that. Will one member be honored? All the members rejoice with it. <laughs> and I think we do that well. Now, verse 27, Now ye are the body of Christ. Let us, let us remember that. When brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so has an idea or thought that we don't necessarily like or is different from what we think, let us remember we're the body of Christ. Same body, one. One. 
through the studies of this chapter, we learn that we ought to put our preferences behind us to exalt the preferences of someone else. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. <laughs> that word particular means that we have been assigned here. I've been assigned to Grace Baptist Church. You've been assigned to Grace Baptist Church. We and who assigned us here? The Lord did. Oh no, I I joined. <laughs> well, some members have manifested that they joined because they left. They weren't assigned here by God. <laughs> Verse 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. Just as that all powerful, all wise, all knowing God designed this human body and placed all the members pertinent to Seth born in this body. He did that for Grace Baptist Church. Not a one of you are a mistake. God has placed you here. You're important to this body. And we ought to be careful not to offend one another, but to, to be quick to exert ourselves to keep the oneness of the body of Christ. And before we're through with this word endeavor, we'll go on to see the picture, the greater picture. Well, actually, it's the next few verses, four, five, six, I think there's seven things there. It behooves each and every one of us. I like the phrase to work overtime, to keep the unity, to keep the oneness. That's our responsibility. Yes, we've got good unity. Good oneness. Pray to God it continues. But it only continues as we make a conscious labor, conscious effort to keep it, Amen. to preserve it. And that's what the Holy Spirit through his penman, the Apostle Paul, was trying to get through to the Ephesians. He's trying to get through to us today. Shall we stand? Be dismissed in a word of prayer.